The challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his Wonder Dog King met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. Many hard winters and many disappointments had bent the shoulders and silvered the hair of old Eric Hansen, who owned the trading post at Forty Mile. But on this cold winter evening, Eric's step was lighter, and he was cheerful and high-spirited as he took two bags of gold nuggets from Jim Peters for safekeeping and locked them in the huge iron safe of the trading post. Well, Jim, yes, you're getting rich. You got more gold stored away in this safe than any prospect in Forty Mile. That claim of mine is sure producing. Here we go. Give me a seat. Well, well, your hand's shaking. You're so darn excited about that granddaughter of yours coming that you can hardly write. Yes, sure am. Ain't never seen her. I've lived alone so long, maybe. Oh, it's going to seem funny having a little girl around here. The sergeant president should be here any minute with her now. He's bringing her up here for me. Uh, <coughs> Jim, hmm? you uh, you know any fairy tales? Fairy tales? Uh, now let me see. Seems he was one about Cinderella, and sure, sure, I remember Red Riding Hood. <coughs> Maybe we better not tell her that Red Riding Hood. She's liable to try talking to one of these timber wolves up here. Okay, <laughs> 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 well, that sounds like prison now. Eh? Hello. Hello, Eric. Come on, Sally. Here we are. Come in, come in. Things coming, Joe. Well, Eric, here's your grandchild. Sure. So this is Sally. Come here, child. <laughs> Gosh, ain't she pretty? Uh, are you my grandpa? Yep, I'm your grandpa. You got nice white rich whiskers. Well, he washed them up special for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a nice big hug. Oh, uh, oh she's all right, King. He's not hurting, huh? King and Sally got to be good friends on the way up here. <laughs> Can't blame him much for worrying, seeing her hug a big whiskery old sourdough like Eric. <laughs> <laughs> he isn't hurting me, King. He's my grandpa. And this is the first time I ever saw him. Oh, hey, Sally, I uh, haven't met Jimmy here. Uh, he's an old friend of mine. <laughs> Uh, you should better call him Uncle Jim, eh? Hello, Uncle Jim. Welcome to Forty Mile, Sally. Well, I guess you better get home right now. Where is home? Well, I used to stay in the back of the store here, but when I heard you was coming, I got a little cabin on the edge of town. You had lots of fun. I bought a sled. We'll get a dog to pull you around on it. We'll take you out there right now, Sally. <laughs> The following morning, Sally squealed with delight as she sat on the sled to which Sergeant Preston had hitched his big lead dog, King. The good dog seemed to enjoy the fun as much as the child and started off carefully at her command. I'm King. I'm King. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Think she'll be all right, Sergeant. She asked so many questions on the way up here that she knows as much about driving dogs as I do. Good morning, Sergeant. You don't have to worry about her as long as she's with King. He'll take care of her. It's strange the way she seems to have taken to him. Well, I guess King has the same reactions that we men have. The bigger and stronger we are, the softer we get when we meet a little girl like Sally. <laughs> Sit down, Preston. Thanks. I'm, uh, I'm glad I have a chance to talk to you alone for a few minutes. I got something I want to tell you. Huh? Why, well, sure, Eric. Go ahead. It's something I've been wanting to tell you for a long time, but I ain't had the nerve... It happened before I came to White Horse, before I knew you. Yes? Before I came here, I was prospecting up near Indian Creek. Never had any luck. Just got enough gold to live on. Well, an old man lived near my claim. He was the meanest cuss ever seen. We used to call him Scorpion Sam. He hated everybody, and nobody ever went near him because he threatened to kill anyone who did. 
Well, one cold day, I passed his cabin and didn't see no smoke coming out of his chimney. I don't know yet why I did it, curiosity maybe. But I went up and pushed his door open and looked in. His voice whipped it. Why, you're snooping in here for I thought there might be something wrong with you. Why are you in bed with no fire? Are you sick? You don't think I'd be laying here if I wasn't, do you? Shut the door. What's the matter with you? I got a gun under this blanket. You try and rob me and I'll kill you. I'm not going to rob you, you old fool. But if you don't build a fire in here, you're going to freeze to death. What happened to you? I broke my leg. That don't mean I can't protect myself and my property. Well, Sergeant, that leg was a mess. I ain't a scorpion for three weeks and got nothing but abuse for my trouble. But I couldn't just leave him there to die. Well, after he got better, I was the only one he'd ever speak to. He was kind of like an animal that wanted to be friendly, but just couldn't bring himself to do it. One evening, the following spring, I was coming back from a hunting cabin. Two men, Jake and Kramer, was with me. I'll sure be glad to get to your cabin, Eric. I'm so tired, I can hardly put one foot in front of the other. Yeah, me too. Hey, look, there's been a fire. That used to be Scorpion Sam's cabin. It's burned to the ground. Sure has. Nothing left but part of the floor. I wonder where Scorpion is. Here he is, and what's left of him? He was burned with the cabin. Must have got trapped in it. Oh, well. There ain't much lost. Gosh, the poor old fella. Hey, look. Right there beside his body. What's that shining? Why, it's gold. Gold? Sure is. And look. There's more of it under that burned board beside him. He must have had his gold under the floor and was trying to get it out. That's how he got trapped. Sergeant Preston, it was more gold than I'd ever seen before. I've been digging in and grubbing for years. Never got a tent that much. Scorpion Sam was a miser. He sure was. Anyway, and this is a hard part to tell. Jake and Kramer and I divided that gold three ways. Nobody knew about it. Then we left Indian Creek. I came to Forty Mile and started the trading post with my share. Jake and Kramer went somewhere as theirs. Well, it's bothered me ever since, but I never done nothing about it. But now that Sally came here, I, I feel as if I got it squared up somewhere. I hope you don't feel as if you have to risk me. Well, Eric, it was wrong, of course. I think the thing for you to do is return the money to Scorpion Sam's heirs, if he has any. But uh, how can I find them? I'm going over to headquarters in Dawson. I may be able to find out something about him from their records. He must have filed a claim. Uh, that'll be fine, Sergeant. Uh, I want to get it off my conscience. <laughs> It was evening four days later when Jake and Kramer stood across the street from Eric's trading post. The wind had risen, and the mercury was dropping rapidly as the Yukon night closed in. Oh, oh, gosh, Kramer. I can't stand here much longer. It's getting so cold I'm numb all over. You won't have to. There goes the last cover. This is the first chance we've had to get Eric alone. He's closing the place up, hurry. He won't give us the combination of the safe... Maybe we could blow it up. We can't. That place next door is too close. Well, if he won't, we'll get it out of him some way. Sorry, boys. I'm just closing up. Oh, Kramer, James. Did you work? Yeah, Toss. I ain't been able to see you alone, Eric. Well, I'm sorry, but I have to get back to my camera right away. I left Sally alone, and the fire must be getting low. I have to get back right now. You're talking to us first in the back room. Well, I tell you, I can't. The temperature's down to 20 below and still dropping. i got to get wood in that stove before get, you... Get into that yeah. back room. Maybe this gun will make you move faster. Yeah. Jake, bring that lantern back here. There ain't no light in the store. Nobody will come in. Sure. In here, Eric. Well, I tell you, I have to get home. Stop I... blabbering. I'll hit you over the head with this gun and you'll never get back to the kid. Something over that window, Jake, just in case. Sure. Cream is what do you want, I have to get back to Sally. Uh. You do, huh? Well, all you have to do, Eric, is to give us a combination of your safe. We'll let you go back to it. What? Are you crazy? Are you going to get it, Cream? Oh? Well, we got plenty of time. 
Maybe you'll give it to us when the mercury drops about 20 more degrees, which is doing fast. Maybe it'll take six hours before the cabin is cold enough for your granddaughter to freeze to death. But as I said, we got plenty of time. Hey, you dirty cowards. You sincerity. You wouldn't do it. Freezing ain't a bad death. She'll just go to sleep. You yellow crazy. All you have to do to save her is to give us that combination, Eric. They won't. All the man is trusting me with the savings of my friends. I tell you, I won't give it to you. As Sergeant Preston neared 40 Mile, it was very late and the temperature had dropped to 40 below. But there was a light in Eric's cabin at the edge of town. Preston had no intention of stopping. But King had different ideas. He left his place at the head of the team, rushed to the door, scratched at it, and barked. Hey, husband, oh! King, come back here! It's too late to visit. We have to get home. Come here, boy. Sergeant Preston, help me. Sally! Well, Sally, what are you doing up at this hour? This cabin's freezing. Where's your grandfather? Oh, I'm so glad you came. I'm so cold. Grandpa didn't come home. And the fire's out. Oh, you poor child. Here, hop up in this bunk. I'll cover you up and get this fire started. Here, King. Get up here beside Sally. You'll keep me warm. Now, as soon as I get the stove going, I'll look for your grandpa. Oh, don't go away. I'll leave King with you. You won't be afraid then, will you? Oh, no. <laughs> King, you're a wonderful dog. Though Eric's store was dark and seemingly empty, Sergeant Preston entered it quietly. As he walked toward the rear, he noticed a crack of light under the back room door. Cautiously, he crept over to it and listened. All right, Eric. Getting cold even in here with the fire going. Your kid's probably half froze by this time. Now, please let me go, Kramer. I'll give you anything the store. We don't want nothing but the combination of that safe. Even if I give it to you, you'll probably kill me so I can't tell who rub it. You won't tell, Eric. Because if you do and we're caught, we'll tell about the time we all split Scorpion and Sam's money three ways. All right, two, two, up with your hands. Where, where you? I'll take those guns. You ain't got anything on this money. We were just sitting here talking to Eric. And I overheard part of the conversation. You were holding him here against his will with the intention of robbing him. I also heard you admit robbing Scorpion's man. Oh, you did, huh? Well, then you're going to have to arrest Eric, too, or we'll testify that you're protecting him. Oh. He helped us do it. Hey, I guess he's right, Sergeant. So unless you want to put Eric in jail, maybe it'd be smart to let us go. Eric hasn't committed a crime. He certainly has. I he looked up the record of Scorpion Sam, as he was called. His claim was filed under the name of Sam Ralston. Eric, I guess you were the only man who was ever kind to him. He left a sealed envelope with the claim agent to be opened after his death, and he left everything to you. To me? Yes, Eric. You robbed yourself. You robbed yourself and split your inheritance three ways, and then you disappeared. Someone else took over the claim after a sufficient time it elapsed. That's all there was left, so they stopped looking for you. Did I? Did I not a thief? No, Eric. Come along, you two. I'm putting you in the local jail for the night. Sergeant, I got to get the Sally out of here. Don't worry about Sally, Eric. She's all right. The cabin's warm and she isn't alone. She has the best protection in the world. My lead dog, King. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>